In this video, we're going to create this interactive sales dashboard that dynamically updates with year, region, and product filters. First, we'll have a quick look at the data. Then, we'll build all of the charts that we need. Third, we'll create the actual dashboard from scratch. And then lastly, we'll add the interactivity to make for that great user experience. All right, let's get to it. For those of you that are new here, my name's Andy. I'm the global head coach of the Data School, and I created this channel to help you become great at Tableau. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, and don't forget to click on subscribe. I don't want you to miss anything that I create. And if you want early access to any of the videos that I create, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter at andykriebel.com. Let's start by connecting to the data. Choose Microsoft Excel, navigate to the Adidas Sample Sales. There's a link to the data set in the description. Click on Open. Because there's only one tab in this Excel file, Tableau automatically brings the data over to the right-hand side. I'm gonna rename it Adidas Sample Sales. Down here at the bottom, we see all of the different fields. We have the retailer, the ID of the retailer, when the invoice was sent, what region it was sold in, and several other fields. Now, we don't need some of these, so let's do some cleanup at the very beginning just to make it easier to work with our data. For example, we don't need retailer ID. Click on the triangle and choose hide. As we scroll across, it looks like everything else is potentially useful for our dashboard. So let's leave it there. Go to the first sheet. Let's start by looking at our monthly sales. Right click and drag invoice date to the columns and pick month continuous. Click on OK. Drag total sales to the rows. Let's clean up the view a bit. Right click on the axis at the bottom and choose edit axis. Let's remove our title and then close this window. Let's give the sheet a title. Double click on the title and let's call this sales by month. Click on OK. Right click on the sales axis and choose edit axis. Because our title already says sales in it, to include the axis title is a bit repetitive. So let's go ahead and remove that. Click on the color shelf and then pick any color you want. I'm going to click on more colors and I'm going to paste in a hex code. Click on OK. I'd like to have the value on the end of the line. So I'm going to click on the label shelf and choose most recent and then tick show mark labels. And there we go. We have our most recent value on the end of the line. Now let's create a map of sales by state. Double click on state. And if you don't have any states show up, that's probably because your region isn't set to the United States. So you can click on the indicator on the bottom right hand side where it says 50 unknown and choose edit locations. I'm going to change my country to USA and then click on OK. And now all of our states show up. For the purpose of this example, I'm going to go ahead and exclude Alaska and Hawaii. So right click on your data source and choose Edit Data Source Filters. Click on Add, choose State, click on OK, choose Alaska, choose Hawaii, and then Exclude. Click on OK, and then click on OK again. Let's drag Total Sales onto the color shelf. I want to use that same dark blue that I used in the monthly sales sheet for my darkest color on this map. Click on the color shelf and choose Edit Colors. I'm going to click on the maximum color and paste in my hex code. Click on OK, and then click on OK again. Now let's clean up the map. Right click anywhere in the map and choose background layers. I'm gonna drag the washout all the way to the right to get rid of the map background. I like to have white borders around my states. So I'm gonna click on the color shelf again, go to border and set it to white. Notice that we have a gray border all the way around the map. Let's get rid of that by right clicking in the view and choosing format. Go to our borders option, scroll down to row divider and set that to none. Scroll down the column divider and set that to none. And now we have a nice clean map. Double click in the title and rename this sheet sales by state. Click on OK. Create a new sheet. Next, we want to create a bar chart that compares the sales by retailer. Drag retailer to the rows. Drag total sales to the columns. Click on the sort descending button on the toolbar. Right click on the header above West Gear and choose hide field labels for rows. Click on the color shelf and choose that same color that you chose in your line chart. Click on the label shelf and turn on the mark labels. Notice the numbers on the ends of the bars are quite large. So let's format those. Right click on total sales and choose format. Go to the numbers option, choose pane, then choose numbers, number custom, one decimal, and let's set the display units to millions. We've got a little bit more cleanup to do on this chart. Right click on the axis and uncheck show header. Right click in the view and choose format. Go to the lines option, turn the grid lines to none, set the zero line to none, 
and set the access rulers to none. Now we have a nice clean bar chart. We may need to do a bit more formatting on this, but let's wait till we get it in the dashboard. Double click on the title and rename it Sales by Retailer. Click on OK. We've got one more chart to build. This time, we want to compare sales methods. Are our sales largest online, in-store, or something else? Choose a new sheet. We're going to build a donut chart. Double click in the columns and type in the average of zero. On the marks card, change the mark type to a pie. Drag total sales onto the angle and sales method onto the color. Right click on sales method on the color shelf and choose sort. In the sort by, choose field. And we want to do descending by the field total sales. This way, our chart is going to sort clockwise around the view. Click on the color shelf and then edit colors. Choose the color palette you'd like to use. For me, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom of my color palettes and pick this one for USA. I'm going to choose in store and make that dark blue. Outlet and make that red. And online, let's make that gray. Click on OK. I'll provide a link in the description to all of these color palettes that I have. I've got tons of them and I think you'll really like it. Now, double click in the column shelf again and type in the average of zero. Notice we get another pie chart. Go to the second pie chart on the marks card, change the mark type from a pie to a circle, drag the sales method off of the view, and drag total sales off of the view. Click on the color shelf and set it to white. Right click on either of the axes and choose dual axis. Right click on either of the axes and choose synchronize. On the marks card, go to the pie chart shelf and click on size and increase the size of the pie chart. And now we have a donut, just a little bit of cleaning up to do. Right click on the axis at the bottom and uncheck show header. Now we need to get rid of the borders and the lines. Right click anywhere in the view and choose format. On the lines option, set the grid lines to none. Set the zero line to none. Go to the borders option, set the row divider to none and the column divider to none. Now we've got a nice clean donut chart. If we want, we could place the total sales in the center of the donut chart. To do that, let's go to our average of zero shelf, close the format window and drag total sales onto the label. Right click on total sales and choose format. On the numbers option, Choose number custom, zero decimals, and let's set the display units to millions. On the circle shelf on the marks card, click on label. In the font, let's set it to a nice big number. Set the alignment to center horizontal and center vertical. And now we have our total sales in the middle of the donut chart. For our final dashboard, we're gonna to wanna to be able to filter by year, by region, and by product. Drag invoice date to the filters, choose years, and then next, and let's pick all for now. Click on OK. Right click on that filter and choose Show Filter. On that filter on the right hand side, click on the drop down and let's edit the title. Let's just call this one Year. Click on OK. Click on that triangle again. And let's change the filter type to be a single value list. And I'm going to switch it back to All to get back to our initial view. We also want to be able to filter by region. So right click on Region in the data pane and choose Show Filter. We're gonna leave that as a multi-select option. Right click on product and choose show filter and we'll leave that one as a multi-select as well. Now that we've created all of the charts, let's work on building the dashboard. Click on the new dashboard tab. We're gonna start by dragging in a vertical container. I get lots of questions about why I do this. In the description of this video, I have a link to a playlist for mastering containers and that explains everything you need to do. But essentially, I like floating the first one so I don't get lots of tiled options that I don't need. Click on the layout option, set the position to 0x, set the y to 0, set the width to 1000, and the height to 800. I like to move it off the edges, so go to inner padding and let's set the padding to 20. Go back to the dashboard tab and let's drag on a text object. This is going to be our title. Let's call it Adidas USA Sales Dashboard. Choose all of the text and let's make it a nice big font. Change the color to something darker. Click on OK. Drag in a blank object underneath of the title. And we're gonna use this as a divider. Choose more options and edit height. Set the height to 10. Go to the layout tab and set the background to black. And notice we now have a nice divider line. Now let's look at how we wanna structure this dashboard. We're gonna have our filters down the left hand side. We're gonna have our line chart right here, our sales by retailer down here, 
and then our map and our donut chart. Now notice as I build this, it doesn't feel like the dashboard is going to be wide enough. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard tab, choose the size option. And I'm going to set the width to maybe something like 1300. Now we can start bringing in the sheets, drag in a horizontal container underneath of the line, drag the sales by retailer sheet into that horizontal container. Up at the top where it says standard, change the view to fit entire view. Because we want to have our line chart and then two charts below it, we need to drag in a vertical container into that horizontal container to the left of the bar chart. This gets a bit tricky, so just pay attention to where the shaded area is. That shows you where it's going to drop. Drag your line chart into that container. Now we want to have the map and the donut next to each other. So we need to put a horizontal container inside of this vertical container. Notice when I drag it in, I get the shaded area at the bottom and I get a blue section around the outside indicating the container I'm going to drop it in. Drag your map into that container and drag the donut to the right of the map. And again, notice the shaded area where it's going to drop into that container. We forgot to rename the donut chart. So double click on the title for the donut chart. And this is going to be sales by sales method. Click on OK. Change the view from standard to entire view. Now we need to do a bit of resizing. Click on the bar chart, choose more options, and edit width. Set the width to 400. On the line chart, choose more options and edit height. Let's set the height to 300. Now we need to get our filters down the right hand side. Notice they're hidden behind the sales by retailer chart. Go to our layout tab and down in our item hierarchy, scroll to the bottom. Open up that tile object, open up the horizontal container, and then choose that vertical container at the bottom. Notice it gets highlighted on the right hand side. Click on the more options and choose floating. Now we can move this around wherever we want. So I'm just going to drag it over here to get it out of the way. Back over in the layout tab in the item hierarchy, notice we have all of these extra tiled objects down here that we don't need. So choose the first tiled option and choose remove from dashboard. Click on delete containers. Where the total sales color is in the middle, highlight that and then double click on the grabber at the top to select that whole container. Now here's the trick. We need to get it inside of this container that has all of these charts. So hold your shift key down, drag it to the right hand side and drop it in that view. It looks like the width of this is okay, but I don't need my color legend. So click on the color legend and remove it from the dashboard. The sales by sales method looks like it should probably be underneath of our donut chart. So go back to your dashboard, drag in a vertical container between the map and the donut. Grab your donut chart and drag it into that container. Grab your sales method from the left hand side and drag that into that vertical container. I'm going to shrink that down a bit in order for everything to be on a single row. Right click on the title for the sales method and uncheck show title. Notice how they don't all fit on one line. So go to the more options, arrange items and single row. We can drag that down a bit. Now we want to make sure that we have our sales by state and our sales by sales method as the same size. Choose the sales by state sheet. Double click on the header to grab that container. Choose the more options and distribute contents evenly. And again, notice we've got a bit of problems down here with our color legend. So if you hover over just next to the one that says outlet, you'll see that we get a left right arrow. Drag that over to the left a bit and everything will now fit in one line. Okay, we're just about done. I'm going to drag a text object above my product filter and I'm going to center it, make it black and let's make it a bigger font. And I'm going to type in here filters. That way my users know what to do with this section. While you're on that text box, go to layout and let's set our outer padding to 10. Go to the product filters, set the outer padding to 10. Go to the region filter, set the outer padding to 10. And do the same thing for the year filter, set the outer padding to 10. Let's make this whole dashboard look a bit nicer now. On the layout tab on the left hand side, set the background to white and do that for each of the sheets in the dashboard. Then choose the sales by retailer sheet, set the background to white. If you click below the year filter, you'll notice it selects that whole container. Set the background of that to white as well. Now let's add a bit of padding around each of our charts. Choose the sales by month sheet, set the outer padding to 10. Sales by state, set the outer padding to 10. Now for the sales by method, we need to do that whole container. So choose the sales by method sheet, double click on the grabber to get the container and set the outer padding to 10. Sales by retailer sheet, set the outer padding to 10. Choose dashboard from the menu and choose format. Let's set the whole dashboard shading to be a light gray. 
Now we have nice spacing between all of our charts. Okay, here's the last part. We need to test our interactivity. If I change the year to 2020, the only thing that changed was our sales by method sheet. So we need to apply these filters to every sheet in the dashboard. Choose the year filter, choose more options, apply filters to all using this data source. Choose the region filter, apply worksheets to all using this data source. Product, more options, apply to worksheets, all using this data source. Now when I choose 2020, everything filters down to 2020. 2021, the same thing. We can adjust the region. Let's say we only want to look at the Midwest. And there we go. That takes a bit of time to create, but it's a really useful, easy to use dashboard that your audience will appreciate. We've got some nice, easy to use filters on the left-hand side, so the audience knows immediately those are things that they can use to customize the view. The rest of the charts are simple, easy to understand, and it makes for a great user experience. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And don't forget to click on subscribe. I don't want you to miss any videos I create. Oh yeah, and one last thing. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter at andycrable.com. You'll get to see videos before anyone else. I'll provide you lots of Tableau tips, and I'll also provide you exclusive discounts to products that I create. Have a good day.